Hello, it's Mr. Omar again talking about your VCE language analysis task. Like all essays in um, VCE English, it is important that you plan because if you know what you're going to say, then it's very easy to sound like you're talking sense. But if you just start talking and hope that the meaning comes to you later, then to be quite honest, it is extremely unlikely to. So here's what you do to plan. The first thing you need to do is read the entire text that you're given. Read it word by word. If need be, look up words you don't understand in the dictionary. This is unbelievably important for this task, because particularly for the later parts of it, but also just to get the basic meaning. If need be, read it two or three times, and you can do this in your reading time during an exam. So you've read the text probably a couple of times. Now you're going to make a list and get some key information out of it. You are going to get the name of the writer out of it. This is normally at the top of the piece. Um, sometimes it's not listed at all for an editorial. The writer is in fact the editor. So if you're doing an editorial from the Herald Sun, then the person who is writing it, who you talk about in your essay, is the Herald Sun editor but usually the writer will be at the top or the bottom, and sometimes it's in the description of the text. You know, if it's a speech, then it might say, this is a speech given by Joe Bloggs at the annual conference for such and such. So you might have to go looking for that information, but it will be there, I promise you, even if it is just that it's the editor. So you want to do that. You want to work out what the issue and contention is, and I've talked about how to do that in another one of the videos, but basically the issue is what topic is this about, and the contention is what does the writer want us to believe. Now I promise you, if somebody is putting this in front of you for a language analysis task, then there's definitely a contention there. They definitely want you to believe something. And to be quite honest, it shouldn't be that hard to work out because, you know, they're trying to convince you and it's very hard to convince people without them noticing that they're trying to that you're trying to sell them something. So the next thing you need to work out is what type of text it is that you're looking at. Particularly in recent exams, there have been not just editorials and newspaper articles, there have been blog entries, there have been speeches, um, there will probably be podcasts at some point, um, you know, it's possible that there might even be tweets and so forth. So be aware of what type of text it is because that's a good thing for you to talk about in your essay. Look at where it was published and what audience it's for. So, if somebody is speaking at a conference for professional oceanographers, then the audience is of people with a knowledge of the topic and people who are educated because they're oceanographers. Um, if it is written for a mainstream tabloid publication or a local newspaper, then it's going to have a particular audience. But if it's written for a youth magazine or for, you know, a children's television channel, it will have a particular audience. So look and see who the publication is and what you know about who's likely to be taking in that publication. Because this is important. It's it, it, You use different things to appeal to different audiences. And the description will probably tell you, well, it will definitely tell you where it was published and it might even tell you a little bit about what type of people are likely to be reading it, and that's important. Here is pretty much the heart of the task. You go through and you highlight the bits of this passage or this text which are persuasive. I strongly encourage you to do this rather than just shopping around for techniques, rather than just saying, oh look, there's emotive language, there's statistics, there's expert opinion, because it might be that this particular text doesn't have those common ones in it. Go through and see what this particular text has and just highlight them. Go through and go, oh yeah, that'll win some people over. Oh yeah, that'll be persuasive. Oh yeah, that'll bring me around. And then, once you've done that, go back and try and label each of the things you've highlighted and say, oh yeah, that's emotive language. Oh, here's a couple of appeals to authority. Here's a couple of appeals to religion. Rather than just going through and looking for the most common ones, because they might not actually be the most, the main flavour of that text. So you go through and do that, and then you make buckets of techniques. And you say, you know, what are the main things that this writer does? And that's how you're going to form your three or four paragraphs. You might say, you know what, there's a lot of literary techniques being used here, like alliteration and rhyme. Or there's a lot of emotive language being used, but you'll only know this if you've actually gone through and looked for everything and seen what the natural pattern is there. So this is how you do the planning for this task, and if your planning is good, then your response will be good.